All right, and welcome back. In this session, we're going to talk about legends and reusing legends as we get into reporting and an analytics. So in this particular project we've been working on in our series or playlist called Model Driven Anything, we have five legends and we'll certainly have more as we're moving through the delivery exercise. And we have patterns that we use to manage these legends. We're going to be bringing these into reports and specific presentations in order for the audience to understand what's going on in a particular model. For example, let's just take the architecture stack diagram that we're creating here. And when we're looking at this, it's the layers of the architecture for our project, starting with the internet or public access through chat, load balancing, CRM, the e-commerce side, which is most important, our data layer, data supply layer, services, and so on. Here's services, here's data supply, where our data is located, in this case, in the cloud, and our machine learning and AI layer, data science layer, if you will. So when you're looking at this model, it's really not that meaningful. It doesn't stand out as far as, well, what am I looking at? So when you bring in a stack uh, pattern legend into the model, all of a sudden it lights up the diagram and helps the audience understand, oh, what is user facing versus agent facing versus service layer and more. You can define your legends as reusable patterns that you can use in any effort to have continuous communication, consistent communication throughout your project delivery. So let's get into some more. So let's look at this block diagram here and try to have a conversation for collaboration and other purposes with our audience. So let's say we're having a conversation about effort uh, between the applications. When I drag this legend in, the way that it's configured is looking at the connectors. You can tell when you're looking at the legend that it's looking at the line associations. It has these lines in here. And it helps us understand from an effort perspective what we believe is easy development or delivery work versus moderate, difficult, and complex. If we take this out, it goes back to normal. Let's look at impact. Again, we're looking at a connector legend that's only looking at connectors. And it's telling the audience here what we believe is development effort versus test support as we're moving forward. And if we remove this and we look at level of effort, Let's drag this one right here. It's a little larger. Now here we're looking at elements and not connectors in this case. And we're telling the audience what we believe from a level of effort, what we the effort exercise is going to be by each application group. And the application groups, when you're meeting with them, they're going to determine what they believe to be complex versus easy or otherwise type of work. And if you combine, let's say you bring in effort legend for associations, now you have both. You have your connector, uh, effort, level of effort, easy, moderate, and then a more detailed level of effort, LOE, for your particular applications. We'll go ahead and delete these from the diagram and bring it back to where it was. And let's look at scaled factors. And I'll talk more about scaled factors in a later effort. In this particular case, we're looking at scales factors from a very low perspective to extra high. And again, I'm gonna talk about scaled factors. But this becomes an important exercise when you're doing reporting and analytics and having a conversation with folks, how, you, how architects believe the work is going to take place and the readiness of the develop, delivery team to deliver the necessary work for the project. So you can combine scaled factors again with the LOE legend where you're having a conversation looking at scaled factors from a connectivity perspective, how the teams feel they're going to be able to do the work to connect or integrate with other applications, and are they ready to do that? And again, this will make more sense when we get into scaled co factor conversation. From a Kokomo 2 is uh, one of the things that I've been following for a long time about 30 years but 
we'll talk again more about scaled factors. I think this is conversations getting more complicated than you want, but you can use your legends to be able to have various conversations across your reports and your presentations to your stakeholders. All right, so when we get into part three of solution approach as part of the Model Driven Anything series and playlist, I'll get more into how I build out the models and I utilize these legends to communicate to my audience, all right? Whether it's presentations, whether it's reports, or whether it's on the web, web reports. So until then, I just wanted to introduce legends again. I will include links to the videos that I have produced in this channel on this subject. But for now, I just wanted to touch on a couple of things. Number one, when you're creating a legend, make sure that you are having a conversation, documenting and telling the users what the legend is. So when they select it, they clearly see, well, what is this legend for? Number two, when we're getting into legends and we're gonna get further into defining these, it's building your tag values. And again, the video for that will be linked below. But tag values is what we're using to communicate. So when we have a particular building block item, and I'm gonna pick the service exchange and I open it up, just to properties, I could certainly view tags in properties over here. But if I go to tags, you can see we have various tags we've defined in here. One of them happens to be level of effort. And we have selected what we believe the level of effort is. This is the power of tag values and extending your unified modeling language within the diagrams you're producing. And we have many other tag values that we can use in relationship matrices as overlays. I've talked about that in this channel and other areas. And number three, and probably most important, if you're gonna create a model area, like let, let's go ahead and take these out for a moment here. And we have a generic blank block diagram in this case. If you're going to have your collaborators, your other stakeholders, work with you in developing or understanding a model, give them a workspace separate from yours. And I will talk about this in part three more where they can come over to the legend repository and they can drag and drop their own legends in here to look at what you believe, what the team believes is going on in a particular diagram, model or discussion. And the last thing that I want to talk about, and I'll get more into it in part three, uh, one of the episodes coming up, is you're going to build out an artifact repository where you keep your reports. In this case, you can see it's the solution architect and has a namespace called solution documents reports. And in it, the solution architect has a specific namespace for legends. You can build your legends anywhere. And as you'll see in those videos, if you go into common elements, you have a, a legend element, you can drag and drop. It's blank in the beginning. I show you how to build out a legend. And then when you're done with that legend, you can move it to your legend namespace, the package where it is. Now, right now, the solution architect has built out and that's me, has built out these legends and has built out this legend repository and cover sheet for each one of the legends. So stakeholders can get to this, they can select them. And if I have notes, let me go back to my common layout here. And if I have notes in here, they're able to select each one of these and understand what each legend means as they're bringing it in. Now, eventually, this legend repository right here, this namespace going into a greater artifact repository will move to wherever project management and the team believes the artifact repository should be. But in this stage of our delivery, all of the solution architect, everything that I'm working on for this project is within my own namespace called solution approach. And then eventually, Solution documents may move to discussions under our artifact repository 
or it may move somewhere else the project manager wants to store these artifacts. All right, so that's gonna cover it for what I wanted to take on Legends. I'm trying to keep the next part as short as possible, and as we're building out that video session and the scripting for that, it's getting pretty long. So we keep coming across things, well, let's take 10 minutes out and let's put it into a learning video or an extra video for you and let you focus on what you believe is most important. But I want you to understand model-driven anything, model-driven architecture, model-driven development as we're moving through this effort, all right? So thanks for watching. Please leave comments down below. Do you use legends? Are legends important to you in communicating to your audience and understanding your own modeling? Let me know down below. Ask any questions you want, good or bad, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. So until the next session, happy modeling.